Welcome to this very short uh, dissection tutorial where we are going to show you the nerves and the arteries that we find in the region of the forearm. So to begin with, I'm going to show the radial and the ulnar artery and their accompanying nerves and I'll also show you the median nerve. So if we come to this region here, we're going to find an artery and a nerve. The first one that is more medial is your ulnar nerve which you can trace superiorly to pass behind your medial epicondyle and that is your ulnar nerve right there right and lat lateral to it we find the ulnar artery which is one of the terminal branches of the brachial artery which in this case is this one right and this lateral terminal branch of the brachial artery that i'm now lifting this is going to be your radial artery the radial artery also travels in company of a nerve and this nerve certainly has been cut here, but this was your superficial branch of the radial nerve. Remember the radial nerve, which is here, in the region of the cubital force, I was going to give you a superficial branch that was actually going to innervate the skin on the lateral three and a half dorsum of the hand. And it's also going to give you another branch. If you look at this here, this is your radial nerve. So notice, just before it divides, it gives you three very important branches. Two of them that we can clearly see here are actually going to innervate the muscles of the lateral compartment of the forearm. One for the brachial radialis, one for the extensor carpi radialis longus, which is why an injury to a radial nerve after the elbow joint will not result in a wrist drop because this muscle here will actually be holding the wrist at the stellar process of the radius. Then this deep branch of the radial nerve, we can appreciate that it's actually piercing the flow of the cubital fossa laterally uh, to then go to the posterior compartment of the arm where it's going to innervate the structures there, the muscles. And it's actually going to change name after innervating the supinator and the extensor carpi radialis brevis, which in this case will be this one. Then it becomes the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Then coming back here, the ulnar nerve thus becomes the nerve of the hand whilst in the forearm it's actually going to pass through the two heads of your muscle which is this muscle here this is going to be your flexor carpi ulnaris and it has two heads one from the medial epicondyle then the other one is from the olecranon process posteriorly and it's going to innervate this muscle as well as the medial half of your flexor digitorum profundus then you can look at the median nerve from two angles you can either view it from your cubital force as the most medial structure here or if you go to the region of the wrist if you lift the tendon of the palmaris longus which is this one i expect to see the median nerve which is this one right. so this is going to be your median nerve it's actually going to be the nerve that is going to mainly innervate the anterior compartment of the forearm except two muscles or one and a half muscles that i've already mentioned that was going to be your flexor carpi ulnaris as well as the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus and this nerve actually lies between two muscles one is this above this is going to be your flexor digitorum superficialis and deep to that you expect to find a profundus which is this one so a recap, radial artery, lateral, right, on the lateral side. However, lateral to it, we say there was a nerve, which is your superficial branch of the radial nerve. If you come medially, right, this is going to be your ulnar nerve. It's more medial, right, then the artery is actually lateral to it. So there's a difference between the arrangement of structures on the medial side where you expect to see the ulnar nerve being medial to the artery. But if you come to the lateral side, the nerve is lateral to the artery. Then this was our median nerve, right? Which you can also trace here. And you can appreciate that it actually passes between the two heads of the pronated teres, which is the head that originates from the medial epicondyle as well as the head that originates from the coronoid process. So that's just about it. Thank you.